we are revising foreign invaders over India. Obviously, major invaders only we are considering. So first, we are considering Persian invaders. They are uh, Hakamani dynasty, or that is called as Achaemenid Empire. So they invaded India first time uh, in known history. They were uh, there were two invasions. One through river Indus and second through Khyber Pass. Then onwards, it was Greek invasion period where we are calling them as Yavan. Total four major Yavan invasions were there. The first one that is Alexander defeated and went back from uh, river Indus, that is Sindhu river. Then second invader Seleucus Nicator, but he was not able to reach till even Indus. He was defeated prior to that and. We lost, uh, they lost that uh, Indian territory till Hindu Kush mountain. Then onwards, uh, again Greek invader that is Yavana, that is Demetrius. He was able to reach till Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh. But Emperor of Kalinga, that is named as Kharvel, who was able to defeat uh, Demetrius, but boundary shrink out, Demetrius was defeated till river Indus. Fourth Greek invader that is Menander or later on he is called as Milinda. So he invaded India till Ayodhya. He accepted, uh, he accepted Buddhism after a debate with Nagasena and uh, he uh, was now called as Milinda. But he was defeated by Ushamitra Shunga and he was also defeated till river Indus. So these four major Greek invasions are there. India or uh, rather I should say Northwest India uh, was invaded by another invader. They were nomads. They were called as Scythians in English. Whereas uh, in Indian language they were called as Shak or Sak. So these people Moga or Moss is first invader, uh, name of invader. Later on they annexed territory till Maharashtra in South and Haryana Madhya Pradesh, uh, like that territory, entire northwest was under their control, defeated first by Satwahan and uh, later on they continued to rule over India uh, by accepting suzerainty of Satwahan, that is Gautami Putra Satkarni. After their rule, another invader arrived, they were called as Yuchi, Tocharian, Shak or Second Shak, Turushka. Like that various names are there, but in India they are popularly known as Kushan. Kushan Emperor continued to rule from Northwest Frontier region, uh, that is today's part of Pakistan, but ultimately they reached the border of Maharashtra in South, whereas uh, almost all Northwest part of present India was also under their control. They were not defeated by anybody. Lastly, when Gupta Empire flourished, they started paying tribute to Samudra Gupta for not to attack in their, uh, not to attack on their nation. So, like that, Kushans slowly get absorbed in Indian community. They accepted Mahayana Buddhism, particularly after the great emperor of them that is named as Kanishka. So, this way, Kushans were absorbed in India. All these invaders till Kushan. They were actually nomads and now next big nomads yet to arrive in India. After Kushan, these Mongols invaded India, tried to invade India. They were called as Jungnu or uh, simply Hun people, uh, wrongly called as Huns. So H-U-N-S, actually spelling is H-U-N-G dash N-U. So Jungnu attacked over India. But the first attack of them were defeated successfully. Uh, India was defended successfully by uh, Gupta prince named as Skanda Gupta. But after 50 years, there was second Hunic attack. Uh, they were uh, also called as White Hoods under leadership of Kinkil. They attacked over India. This time they reached till Madhya Pradesh by defeating all Gupta emperor. And ultimately, uh, Mihirbul, the Hun ruler, was defeated finally by Mihirbul, the Hun ruler, was defeated finally by 
Gupta Confederation. But what happened next? He was allowed to go outside India peacefully. Mirgul again invaded India. So history repeats. That is in history only history repeats. So Mirgul again invaded India and tried to rule over northwest part of India, particularly in Kashmir and all this territory. He continued to rule. And finally, Huns were dissolved in Indian community by accepting uh, Hinduism. Rudra, that is a form of Lord Shiva, was accepted as their family deity and they continued to rule over northwest part of India, even Rajasthan, parts of northwest UP, etc. were under their control. Gurjar came here for trading purpose. Then they accepted Hinduism and dissolved in Indian community. But after decline of Hun, Gurjar took power in their hand. Their dynasty's name is Pratihara dynasty and they continued to rule initially from Arauli mountain and nearby territories. Later on, they went to southern part of their territory that is southern part of Arauli. Uh, at that time, it was called as Saurashtra, Anupadesha, Anartha, Bhrugukachya. But these territories were annexed by these Gurjar people and later on this was called as Gurjar Rashtra, corrupted as Gujarat. So this way, these are all nomads except Greek, remaining all things, uh, they were nomads. They, so they are completely dissolved in Indian community, particularly northwestern part of India. Now till here, whatever foreign invaders we discussed, they were with fewer exceptions like Greeks. They were nomadic invaders. They were having their own some different religions. But when they entered in India, they started accepting Indian religions. Say for example, uh, many Greeks accepted Buddhism, particularly you are aware of Menander and his followers, they accepted Buddhism. Some of the Greeks accepted Vedic religion that is called as Hinduism. So like that they accepted. Now uh, Scythians, most of the Scythians were converted into Hinduism at that time. Whereas uh, Kushans, out of that many Kushans accepted Mahayanism that is Buddhism, a uh, sect of Buddhism. Then Huns, they were absorbed as Vedic religion, they accepted Kshatriya as their clan. But uh, henceforth, the invaders arrived, they were Muslim invaders. First successful Muslim invader over India, that is Arab invader, named as Muhammad bin Qasim. Why I am telling you that Arab invader, because we are calling as Muslim, but they are coming from various nations, they were coming from various nations. And uh, out of that, Muhammad bin Qasim arrived from Arabia, Arabian Peninsula, properly from Damascus, that is from Syria, he was arrived. Uh, he arrived in 8th century, somewhere around 720. So therefore, we are calling as 8th century AD, uh, he arrived. After that, for many years, no foreign invaders were there in India, but around 1000 AD, Another invader arrived. His name is Muhammad Ghaznavi. He was from Afghanistan, but originally he was Turk. And from Turkestan, he invaded India. That is from Afghanistan, he invaded India. Muhammad Ghaznavi totally invaded India uh, 17 times. Out of that, only first time he was having failure. But afterwards, for next 16 rides, he was successful. He was not at all uh, get defeated by any Indian. Only he was offering of summer season in India and therefore he was returning back to Ghazni. Uh, actually Sanskrit word is Gajani. Once upon time this was territory as you are aware Kanishka, Kushan Emperor. He was patron of Sanskrit language. So the names are given in Sanskrit language. So Gajani. So he was from Gajni, that is we are calling as Ghazni now. So he was there in uh, Ghazni and finally uh, after his death, whatever his efforts were there, they were all in the vein because Ghazni was burnt out by their enemies. After Muhammad Ghaznavi, for nearly 200 years, no other outsider attack was there over India. But then onwards, uh, India was invaded once again by Turk invader, his name is Muhammad Ghauri. 
uh, Shiabuddin Al Mohammad Gauri. So now he made uh, his idol, properly speaking, he was considering idol as G Muhammad Ghaznavi. But uh, what is difference? Muhammad Ghaznavi lost first battle and victorious in all rest of the battles, whereas uh, this Muhammad Gauri almost all lost, lost each and every battle from Queen of Gujarat to Prithviraj Chauhan, the great emperor, everywhere he lost the battle and he was successful only in last battle. The battle that is called as Battle of Talayan that was very very important from Indian history because in that battle Prithviraj Chauhan, the great emperor from Indian side lost out whereas uh, by betrayal only and uh, Muhammad Gauri was having success but after that Muhammad Gauri appointed his uh, nobles uh, actually slaves but uh, that out of that slave Bhaktiyar Khilji was able to conquer almost all Gangetic Valley almost all Bengal was annexed uh, Muhammad uh, sorry this uh, Bhaktiyar Khilji was defeated by only tribes from Assam. They are called as Ahom tribes. So from that he was lost. But otherwise entire North India was under control of this Turki rule. After this uh, series of Islamic invaders, India faced again attack of Mongol people. These Mongols were nomads. They were following most probably a religion that is called as Tangri. That is as their religion. They attacked over India several times. The key factor that was Chengiz Khan or Genghis Khan, original name is Taimujdin, but uh, after annexing out China, he took title as Chin Giz Khan. That is original title, but uh, in English he is referred as Genghis Khan. He produced a fantastic empire. It is said that even Alexander the Great's empire was at one corner of Chengiz Khan's empire. So vast empire was produced by Chengiz Khan, but he was not there in India. Whatever the empire left behind by Chengiz Khan, that was ruled by various uh, fragments, they are called as Khanets. And then different Mongol invaders time to time invaded India. Now North India was facing this Turki rule. So already they were ruled by Turki people, outsider only, but they were following some religion. Whereas Mongols, they were also claiming that they were also Turk, but they were Mongols. And they tried to attack India, uh, particularly in North India, the dynasty of this Turki people, that is called a slave dynasty. Uh, Kutubuddin Aibak and later on Iltatmash, the descendant of Iltatmash ruled over this dynasty. But they faced strong attack of Mongols time to time. Ultimately, the Targhi Khan is name of uh, Mongol invader. He was defeated finally, but uh, Punjab was under his control only. So after slave dynasty, another dynasty ruled over Delhi Sultanate. Keep in mind, when they were ruling over Delhi Sultanate, the South India, Rajputana, Madhya Pradesh, that, is, uh, that was called as Malwa at that time, Gujarat, all these territories were free. But now, uh, free means they were not under control of Turkey attack. But now, another dynasty set up there that is called as Khalji or Khilji dynasty. Jalaluddin Khilji is founder. Keep in mind, Jalaluddin Khilji was not Indian. No doubt over 100 years, their ancestors were staying in India. But still, they were considering themselves as Turk. Then they were, uh, they spent their 200 years in Afghanistan. So they were also called as Afghan. But they got power by Chahalgami system only when he proved that he is of Turk origin. This way, after getting Turk identity, then only Jalaluddin Khilji was able to claim that power of Delhi Sultanate. And he started expanding Delhi Sultanate towards South India. His nephew, come. Uh, son-in-law named as Allahuddin Khilji extended his empire till Kanyakumari. 
this was the greatest achievement of Kilji. If at all we have to say who is the best invader or best warrior in this all historical period, then we have to name Allahuddin Khilji rather than Muhammad Ghaznavi. Because under his rule, India was united uh, from uh, say Kabul Kandahar onwards till Bengal and from Delhi to Kanyakumari, all these territories were under control of uh, Allahuddin Khilji but not at that time. Revelations were constantly going on and that after Khalji or Khilji, it was ruled of Tughlaq dynasty. But Tughlaqs were facing again attack from Mongol invaders. And finally, the great ruler of that dynasty, I am not uh, ironically saying great ruler because he was great ruler, but from Vivizikar. But uh, his name is Muhammad bin Tughlaq. He shifted capital from Delhi to Daulatabad. Devgiri actually, but he re renamed as Daulatabad in Maharashtra because of this fear of Mongol invaders. Uh, reality is something different. You can refer our uh, YouTube lecture. Savarkar I study circle is name of our channel on YouTube. You can refer that lecture. There I have explained completely that uh, why Muhammad uh, bin Tughlaq shifted his capital. Anyway, but after Tughlaq, finally a great Mongol invader arrived in India. Uh, that great invader is named Taimur. He is called as Taimur Lung. He was very very cruel. Obviously Mongol means very very cruel Mongol invader at that time. So he was as cruel as Chengiz Khan. But uh, he reached in Delhi. He annexed out Delhi. He ordered Katleam that is general slaughter at Delhi. And then uh, he went back. See here the difference is that Taimur Lung was went, uh, uh, sent back from India. It is said that because of some local people, they resisted very strongly. Taimur went back. Now Taimur was not Muslim initially. Uh, Taimur was not Muslim. He was following Tengri religion. But at half of his life, he accepted Islam. And then he reached till Delhi as well as Europe's part were under control of Taimur Lung.